Giro del Apennino was yesterday, as you can see here, the parkour. It's a pretty hilly uh, middle part and then followed by a 20k run into the bottom. So Wanti were here, um, along with our care as well, Okipo, Kern, Farmer, Israel, um, as well as some of the smaller Italian Conti teams as well. So here's Mainkies, who um, was pretty active early on, on this last climb. So this is the last climb of the day with about 28, 30 kilometers to go. You can see uh, Mikael Ries is here, Tets Fatsion as well for Androni. Um, the footage is a little bit shaky. I think it's done on 4G, um, but there's also Simon Clark as well, um, who had a good race. Uh, a couple other decent teams as well. UAE were here, actually, who did, and they didn't really have the best outing, um, which we'll see in a minute. So here is basically going up the climb. Is selection has almost been made. Um, this was basically the, the lead group. It was a pretty selective race all day. There was not any footage. They only really started it towards the end. Uh, so you couldn't actually see what happened before, but you can see Mikey's is looking good. I think he had a big, big block on altitude, so it's feeling more and more comfortable. Tess Fatsi on this parkour suits him really well. Not too steep, the climbs, um, but also not too bad. You can see at the back there, there's Paul Double, the absolute hero. We interviewed him before uh, last year after a good result in Copper Bartoli. Um, he also has had some strong results previously um, this year as well um, in GP Industria Artigianato. Um, but yeah, he's managed to get back on here. So Paul Double's at the back. Um, he's a UK-based rider, but races for NJ Kappa, Viz VPM, who are an Italian Conti team. So you can see here, Louis Mike is still drumming on the front. They've also got Quinton Hermans as well, as well as George Zimmerman. So Wanti really in quite a strong position here. Um, and this is actually Mikael Ries, who goes on the attack early on. And the only man who can follow it straight away is Louis Meinkies. Um, everyone else is sort of sitting up. Um, RK obviously have two in the front group, so they're not going to chase. And then you also have um, Wanti with two guys as well. So in that sense, it's there's no real need to, to chase uh, for most of them. And I think the other guys were probably on the limit because it was... It was ridden pretty aggressively, this race, it seems, um, based on the watts. And Mikey's looking super, super lean. He's looking like, you know, back to when he was coming top 10 in Tour de France every year. And this really was the, the big selection on the climb. Um, you know, there was there was further selections as well, which were about a C, but this was the big one. So you can see the chasing group here, keep a firm farm on the front. It's a pretty fast climb, like you can see from um, just the speed as well as what gearing they're using. Like, they're all on the big ring as well. So, you know, it's... um. The draft definitely does help um, quite a lot um, on this climb. Actually, on this morning now, so I guess it's steepened up a little bit. Um, but yeah, it was, it was one of those races where Tets Fatsion, I think, was the favourite. He realised this could be the move. He bridged across on a flat section here um, with Nikla, with um, with Alessandro Verde also going across as well um, for Arkea. And this, again, was a big move to get across. And it was really one of those things where it was a selection more like out of bat and anything else like people just attacked across but there wasn't really anyone chasing as much it was more like sort of last man standing situation um because we were about to see that this selection then causes a lot of other ones um to go as well and then it all comes back together so we skipped that skipped like 20k because basically it was a descent and um, Paul Double's group got back on uh Simon Clark's group got, got back on so it's 9k it's pan flat and this is where um, Wanty, to be honest, played it very well. So they knew they had Mikey's and George Zimmerman with Tets Fatsion. Tets Fatsion is the fastest sprinter here by a long way. Um, he basically was followed every attack over the top. Um, Paul Double got distance, but then got back on the descent as well as Simon Clark and the rest of them as well, um, like Ivan Moreno for a keeper for Kern Farmer. So here, when they're chasing along, there's no real need. The gaps are actually huge. It's about the, the next group was sort of two, three minutes back from here. Um, so there was really no stress in working that hard. You can see here, there's a lot of freewheeling. No one wants to pull through because, I mean, if you're on your own, why would you pull when there's two two teammates? Um, so it became a lot more of a tactical race all of a sudden. Um, and I think Louis Meinkies was probably thinking, I actually feel okay. Like, you know, I need to... I need to try and get away because Simon Clark is also a strong finisher, obviously finishing second Amstel goal um, behind uh, Van der Poel in like 2019. So yeah, it's definitely definitely one of those races where you think it's it doesn't really suit anyone to go on the attack. So you can see here, Louis Mikey's goes, Paul Double's trying to follow, same with, same with Javier Marino from being keeper of Kern Farmer. Um, and I guess it makes sense, you know, if you don't have the best sprint, you need to follow other people. Um, and the one twoing is really what, what they had to do in order to get away because otherwise Tess Vazion will batter you all in the sprint. So here comes, I think this is Mikael Ries um, for Arkea on the front. Again, just making sure the pace is high. I'm not really sure what their tactics were because I don't think they, maybe they thought Alessandro Verde was, was a good sprinter, but it, it's not necessarily the case. And you can see, again, Louis Mankey's looking around trying to play, play some good tactics. 
and see how he is going to win this race. Uh, and, you know, it is interesting how they all go about it and how people often overestimate their sprinting ability. And I guess also the other thing that comes into place is like, if you go on an all out attack and then get dropped, is it worth it? Like if this is a, you know, the top five is a good result for you, then there's no need to go for, um, for anything better. But I think for a lot of these guys, it probably wasn't like that. You know, it's, it's a decent race, but it's only a 1.1, which for them probably isn't crazy, crazy important. So you can see Mikey's is going here. He's just sort of rolling off. Um, looks around, sees that no one's really chasing him and says, you know what, I think it could be time to put the hammer down. So he gets out of the saddle, starts sprinting. Javier Moreno, again, is trying to get on. Paul Double as well. Javier Moreno looks around and is like, I'm not chasing all of you. They all look at each other. Cheerio. Thanks for coming. That's it. And to be honest, the person who has to chase here is Arkea. Arkea have to chase. If you're anyone else, you're on your own. Maybe Simon Clark, because again, he's world tour. But if you're just like a pro Conti or Conti guy here, you're not chasing. Like, why would you chase? It's It's up to them. Um, but that was it, basically. Like, he attacked. Uh, um, Arkea looked around, couldn't close it. Um, and then, literally, the gap just ballooned out. So, it was 700 meters to go now. We skipped ahead because, literally, he just rode away. The gap ended up ballooning out to about 1 minute 40. Because once it's obvious he's gone, why would you pull? Like, it may, they weren't going to get caught from behind. So, you know, the gap to him is irrelevant. It's not like a stage race or anything where there's time gaps are important. So, Mikey sort of rode away. And then, that was literally it. And in a, in a way, it seemed a bit of a soft finish from this race. On the climb, there was a lot of attacking. You thought, okay, maybe stuff would happen. But they all were quite evenly matched. So you expected a bunch sprint. I think with Tets Fatsion, he gambled that they'd close it. Maybe in hindsight, Tets Fatsion should have done more work to close it. Because I think even if he had pulled uh, significantly more to try and bring it back, I still believe he would have he would have beaten most of them in the sprint. Um, just because he is such a, such a strong sprinter. But you can see all the people crossing behind. Um, and Louis Mankies takes an absolute huge win uh, for Wanty um, and himself. Apparently he hasn't won, I think, for, since like 2016 or something, 2017. It's been quite a long time for the boy. Um, obviously pure climber, but not necessarily the best watts per kilo, but very consistent in, in the tour, um, which is why I guess he was so good at coming top 10 um, GC. So anyway, we're now going to skip ahead towards the finish. So we're just coming up now um, with a couple hundred meters to go. And um, every, there's a lot of playing around. There's a lot of messing around. People are, you know, seeing where's what, like who's who. I mean, to be honest, Tess Fatson's the wheel you want to be on. Tess Fatson, it definitely has the best sprint. Um, and he looks quite confident. He's on Paul Double's wheel. Paul Double's third wheel here. Um, it looks like uh, Reyes is leading it out along with George Zimmerman. Um, it's quite a long sprint. It's sort of an uphill one as well. So they start to absolutely launch it here. Tess Fatson goes on the on the left as we look at it here, gets into George Zimmerman's wheel goes straight past him and then just leads it out and basically no one's coming around. Simon Clark, not a great sprint, but Paul Double managed to hold on to a good result. He got sixth in the end, fifth in the fifth in the sprint, just getting pipped at the line by Alessandro Verde, but really good result for Paul. Um and as well as Louis Meinke. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video and I will see you in the next one.